<laughs> Wait, Traeger makes a griddle? Yeah, they do, and it's called the Flat Rock. Now, full disclosure, Traeger sent me the Flat Rock griddle to do a complete and honest review using it. With that being said, I haven't had it very long. I've only had it for two days. It's not Traeger's fault, it's the dang trucking company. It's been in my area since last week. They could have brought it to me, but oh well. But in the past two days, I have spent ample time using the Flat Rock so I can give you my first impression. And that impression, it's pretty dang good, so grab a little flaxseed oil, Lance. We're gonna amplify some backyard barbecue fun. One thing that I've always said about Traeger is they know how to package their grills. From all the different ones that I've had in the past, every single one of them has come in perfect. They're packed nice and tight, and they're organized. And that's the same way that the Flat Rock was packed, but they even started to label on the outside of the boxes with a picture so you grab the right box for the next step that you have to assemble. And like all the rest of them, if you've got little kids, you even get to make a fort out of the box. The assembly was a breeze on this griddle. There's not a lot of parts and steps to do. The first thing that I noticed right away is that the Flat Rock has really nice casters. Not only do they turn 360 degrees, but all four of them lock. Yeah, I assembled the first part of this griddle. But after basketball practice, my boys came and helped me assemble the rest of it. The frame itself, it's not that heavy, but it is bigger and bulky. So if you've got an extra hand, it just makes it a lot easier. The one thing that I actually screwed up, and I don't make a lot of mistakes, but pay very close attention to the actual tank bracket on the bottom. I put one of the brackets on upside down, but I didn't have my glasses on. It's a good enough excuse. So we had to take this side bracket off so we could put the tank bracket on correctly. Well, what do you expect? I'm out of practice. That's the boy's job to put these pits together. After it was all assembled, the first thing that we did was plug it in. Yeah, you heard me right. We plugged in the flat rock. The flat rock does require a little electricity so you can use some of the features on it. You can still run the flat rock without electricity, but you'll have to use the matchstick and light up the burners through one of these three holes. One really cool feature that takes electricity that I like is the actual fuel sensor that will calibrate how much fuel you have in your tank. So with that sensor, you should never run out of LP ever on any cook. I calibrated mine with a full LP tank. The procedure to do this is very simple. Just hold the calibration tank button down for three seconds, and once the lights start sweeping from right to left, then place your tank on the hook underneath the pit. It'll take about 15 seconds to figure it out, but once it's done, it's gonna beep and the LEDs are gonna start flashing. Then just hook up the hose, and if you're ready to start it up, open up the valve. Because of prior experiences I've had with griddles and even gas grills, with them not lighting up on the first try, we did take the griddle off the flat rock to watch and make sure that all those burners ignited. I'm happy to say that all three of those horseshoe burners lit up instantly. So I was pretty relieved that I didn't have to adjust any burners or igniters on the flat rock. Plus the way that this griddle's designed, you really can't see any of your burners because the griddle actually sits inside the chamber a little bit, which I think is a pretty good concept and an idea of a design because a lot of people struggle with what's called the blowout. For all of you that live in windy areas, you know what I'm talking about. When that wind gust comes along, sometimes it can actually snuff out a burner. Or it's just giving you a lot more hassle with just trying to get to temp. With the griddle being down inside and having all this protection around it, other than there is a vent on the back, the flat rock, it's not really going to be worried about any wind. Doing the seasoning on the Flat Rock, it's exactly the same as every rolled steel griddle. If you've never seasoned up a griddle before, it's really easy, and here are the steps. The first thing that you're gonna do on the Traeger Flat Rock is turn all the valves on. Then hit the ignite button. Leave the valves on high and preheat it for 10 minutes. Once that's done, you can start adding some oil. You can either use flaxseed oil, you can use a little lard or some beef tallow. Some canola oil works great, but if you don't have any of these, you can even use a little bit of cooking spray. But I typically use flaxseed oil to condition any griddle. It's pretty easy to apply the oil, just start squirting across it in a zigzag pattern. Then just take some paper towel or a cloth 
use a set of tongs, or you can do like me. I wear a couple protective gloves and a nitrile on top, and I take a cotton rag and wipe all the excess and kind of buff it up a bit. It's gonna get pretty smoky, but just let it go, and once it stops smoking, it's time to apply another coat. You need to put at least four coats on, but for some of you that might be wondering, I actually coated my flat rock five times, which means it took me about 50 minutes to season up this griddle. Before you start cooking on the flat rock though, you're gonna wanna shut off the valves and let it cool down for at least 30 minutes. The first cook that I did on the flat rock was burgers. And yes, they were just burgers because number one, I had about six ounce meatballs that I started with and it wasn't even 80-20, it was like 85-15. So it's not really a smash burger, right? So I did burgers, but I kind of smashed them. But I don't wanna hear anything in the comments that it's not a smash burger. I didn't call it a smash burger. I call it a burger, trolls. Before I started cooking those burgers though, I wanted to check the temp on that griddle. And I was super impressed with how it read about 550 to 600 degrees across the whole surface. From my experience of using griddles, and it's not a lot, I don't have a twin brother either. I have ran enough griddles in my life and none of them have ever read that even across the board like the flat rock. Most of them that I've had has one side that's a lot hotter than the other. The only other cook that I've done on this Traeger so far is I cooked up some chicken and rice. Not only is chicken and rice really easy to cook, my family really likes to eat it, especially the boys after basketball practice. They can go in the fridge and they can reheat it up if they want to, and I don't have to listen to, what are we gonna have for supper? Yes, you get my point. My boys are growing and they eat constantly. That's all they do is eat. I look like I eat, but I don't eat that much. With all that being said, I am very impressed with the Traeger Flat Rock Griddle. I certainly think that they're gonna be able to compete with Blackstone, Camp Chef, and Pit Boss in the griddle market. And a couple features on this griddle that I really like, number one, they kind of use the same concept as the Traeger Timberline XL's Ash Cleanout. This is just their grease cleanout. And the bonus, it's the same size grease pail as their pellet grills. One thing that I did notice while cooking on this griddle is that because this little grease port is right in the front and the chamber is all closed, there is a little bit of a heat exhaust coming right out of this port. So when you're cooking around it, you're just gonna have to work on the left-hand side of it or on the right-hand side of it. If you use a griddle a lot, you know that you never have enough room. But these shelves are pretty big. And I've always had issues with leaving the little squeeze bottle too close to the griddle and it starts to melt. With these big shelves and with the pop and lock technology, I see myself actually getting some accessories for this griddle someday. The other bonus is these shelves, well, they fold down. So it takes up a lot less space for storage and they work really easy and slick and they're pretty dang sturdy the lid is really nice and it closes great and it seals really tight you have a cooking area of 33 inches by 18 inches and i really like traeger's cooking utensils that they sent these spatulas they're heavy duty these little squeeze bottles they're just typical but they're nice and big with this thing though you could easily scrape barn paint off with it now some of you might be asking how much is that to dare on february 22nd 2023 the Traeger Flat Rock Griddle is coming in at $899. I will have a link in the description below if you wanna find out more about pricing and more about this Flat Rock Griddle. Some of you might not really like the fact that you have to use electricity to make this griddle work, but electricity does give you a couple cool features on this griddle. Most of you that are watching this are cooking in your backyard anyways. So this way, you'll have your barbecue pit or your Traeger pellet grill along with your griddle. And yeah, Traeger makes a griddle. The only issue that I've had so far is that this one burner is kind of sticky. I'm hoping after a few more cooks it starts to loosen up, but if it doesn't, eh, I gotta talk to Traeger. Well, that's all I got. Roll the nation.